Kelvin Holiday is an internationally recognized best-selling author and number one authority in transformational leadership systems that build sustainable, productive, remote virtual assistant teams. What I really, really enjoyed about this uh, interview, about this conversation was Kelvin's and is Kelvin's passion, Kelvin's dedication to the people in his company and to people in general, actually. He built this uh, very powerful CRM that actually makes life easier for business owners who have more than three to five employees. But you will quickly notice that Kevin is very, very passionate about uh, tech, but tech that actually has a very human component to it. And I really enjoyed diving uh, deeper towards the end um, and asking him about this impossible goal that he set for himself and what is his plan to actually make that goal happen. This is gonna be a powerful conversation. I think you're gonna get a lot out of it, especially if you're an ambitious entrepreneur who wants to build a big organization that has a big impact in the world. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So we're here with Kelvin Holiday. Welcome. Welcome to the conversation. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. Beautiful. Kelvin, tell us a bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Like what, when did you know you were going to become an entrepreneur? Look, I, I think it was just, it just stumbled across it in some respects. It was so like, um, it's so inherent within what who I am and what I do, it uh, it just kept on, kept on building up. So even as a, as a young buck, you know, I, I started off uh, very young. Uh, my my dad had a chain of shoe stores, and so literally I was in his shoe store at you know 12, 13 years of age, straight after school, and went in there and got into the sales side of things. And so business was always what I was about. And um, but I was also had a practical sort of skills and. Um, and so I, I went down the pathway of getting a trade, becoming a carpenter. Uh, 24 years of age was was really my first major business. That so was a $45 million building company um, at 24. Um, yeah, you, you, you grow that sort of thing with a couple hundred employees and tradies. And yeah, you realize that you, there's something that something in you that is about growing and, and developing things. So it's just been in multiple businesses, some going absolutely fantastic, some going not so well. Um, but I think... I think when I really say, if you say, when did I realize what I was doing? It was coming out of the building industry and I worked for a period of 12 years in the not-for-profit sector, working in churches and, and um, uh, community sort of works. And I realized that while I had a passion for helping people, the, I, I, I missed the business part of it. I missed the, mm. I missed the growth side of things. I was, I, was, I was wanting to grow. And when you're in a community group, Sometimes you, you got to go with boards and stuff like that, and so apparently I just got bored. Uh, <laughs> board work, 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 working with the boards and um, the not for profit sort of sector. Nothing wrong with it, and I loved it. Look, really loved it. But that's what developed my my strength of leadership to be able to take that back into the business world and lead with influence rather than just be leading by who who's going to be paid the most amount of money. Mm. Very different style of leadership between not for profit mm. and then, yeah, so. So going back into the business world after that not-for-profit 12 years was, yeah, really gave me some some tools of personality and and how to relate to people and and actually seeing things through different people's eyes rather than just the way I want to do it. But yeah, that's yeah, that's that's definitely a huge challenge for high performers. Um, you know, you you kind of have the sense of I need to be right. You know, my vision is the best. I have to be the strongest, but actually like when you step into that space of a more vulnerability and say, Hey, you know what, let me see what other people are thinking. Let me see what I can learn from this person and this person that actually, you know, catapults you to your next level for sure, for sure. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. balancing out the, the yang with the yin. Absolutely. And, and, and there was so much, I, I love, I love that transitional period where I was still involved in the not-for-profit sort of area and then was was developing my new business and it was in that little time there where I, 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 that's where I wrote my, my first book and it was just like you know how can I get the not-for-profit world to listen to the business world and how can I get the business world to listen to the not-for-profit and, and pulling the best out of both spaces yeah and in that you know interviewing hundreds and hundreds of people I went oh 
you know that was where my mindset you know on how to how to transform how to really work with people just totally went through the roof so yeah yeah i totally get that i mean i i did martial arts like for since i was 13 but i noticed that the you know there was something missing like the the mm. soft skills that you get from personal development was missing in the martial arts and vice versa right the willpower that you get from martial arts and the discipline was kind of missing in a sense from the personal development right so it's it's really powerful when you see like these two spaces that apparently have nothing to do with each other or maybe they should right and you combine them that's actually a very powerful combination and today you you do help business owners right you help them scale you help them grow yep it's very it's yeah how how this has come about was it was quite interesting going back in 2018 i decided to sell up and retire um i managed to last for two weeks um before i realized <laughs> that retirement wasn't for me and um yeah. and out of that was a lot of stuff that i've been doing for a lot of time um you know, evolved and so I, I had one business which was an outsourced business based in the philippines and very passionate again i was i was, I was employing a lot of those people because I, yeah they were good and it was a good business as such but i was trying to get involved in the community of the Philippines to help out in that. That's where my driver was. Okay. And so a couple of different things happened. And so that so the outsourcing business is where I really got back involved and started to grow that first. And, um, and a lot of business owners will come to us and say, how, how do I actually work with you know, a VA service? How do I work with remote teams? How do I build a remote team? And so that's where the consulting sort of side of things really got back into the flow. And I got very heavily involved with mentoring different people and coming up with different programs. And then the next part was the technology. Like people going, well, hang on a second. Now I'm gone from an office space to I'm remote. How do I actually do all those different things and right. scale and and so we we built it oh, just as you do. You just like okay, let's start an IT company. And so we built our own CRM. We built our own project management software. And so very much three separate companies. But you know this little diagram up behind me, three separate companies, mm -hmm. but they all come together and lock together right in the hub, and actually just drive the thing home beautifully. Yeah, you mentioned in the previous uh, podcast interview, right? The three elements mindset tech and teams that's correct right so that's definitely the heart of it i do want to dive deeper into that but before we do what would you say was your biggest challenge as an entrepreneur like looking back i think probably the biggest challenge that i had in all honesty would be the bringing on of different partners um that it got blurry you know particularly family partners and um and so once you start bringing on you've got to really be clear if that's the way you want to go that's okay for me it didn't work it, it uh, that was that was the biggest stumbling block so once you start getting bringing on bigger, bigger partners and and you start getting a lot of influences in what you're trying to do only one person can really drive the mission and vision of a particular business mm -hmm. and um and once you try and get other people even if they're only a small shareholding, you've got to have some sort of clarity about that. So that was my biggest challenge is really having people in a business that really had too much to say and are spending more time in conflict resolution about where we should be going rather than actually doing the job. Hmm. And how did you solve it? How did I solve it? I sold out the business. <laughs> it was it was the only way, just, right? It was the only way and, and nobody could agree with doing anything. So we just, 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 I literally just walked away and um, it was just a matter of walking away going, okay, that's an, enough's enough. All right. I had some of some of my own stuff that I was doing already and I'll just put my time into that cause some conflict, but it was easier just to walk away knowing that I had something else to fall back on. So it, it, it worked out quite fine in the end, but yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a challenge at the time. Yeah. And I bet it wasn't an easy decision wasn't an easy decision but particularly when there's family involved and yeah. um you know so you, you still got to meet up with family at um at different times with with different things so it was very uneasy for a long time um yeah. but I, I look back at it now as absolutely the right decision um i wouldn't have probably done it anything different you know you, people say you know you can you know 
pull the band-aid off and, and get over the pain quickly or you can you know, sit there and go through the pain for a long I just pulled the band-aid off and went for it so was that before you started the nonprofit? um it was yeah it was actually after it was after. actually after yeah. It was, yeah so it was after and it was and I, when i was moving out of the not-for-profit starting my own business it's like I got, I got involved with the family business so to speak and um it just it didn't work for me you know i was following somebody else's vision i was following somebody else's passion right. and i was just yeah it was just not where i was at yeah yeah it's very hard for you know an entrepreneur to follow somebody else's vision and passion right mm. easier yeah. for an align. entrepreneur mm. yeah you can align and and, yeah. and that's what i like love about you know referral partnering and and you know getting get, getting strategic partnerships but this is your business. That is my business. This is what I do. That is what you do. Here is the the agreement, and we go down and we sell our own products. And you know there might be a, a bit of an exchange of you know affiliate programs and stuff. But you're in control of your business. Yeah. So the yeah. buck stop. The buck stops with you as well. That's powerful. That's powerful for sure. Um, let's kind of flip it on its head. Um, let's start with teams. You know. Like if you ask any entrepreneur, you go into any business, like what's your biggest challenge? Oh, finding the right people, you know, hiring the right people. Mm. How do you deal with that? Can, can I, I think yeah, there's an old adage, slow to hire, fast to fire. Quick to fire, right, yeah. Just that, that is, that's probably the best bit of wisdom I've been able to hold on to. And so I spent a lot of time hiring the right people. Yeah. Um, we go through personality tests. We go through um, their gifts and how, how they work together. And so it's not just personality. It's also like the love languages are. So we we intimately know people before we even start. Yeah. And so, and, and we've, we've got that. And so we we will make sure that that's solid. All right. So, you know, in all the time that we've been going, like in, in multiple years, like I've only probably had to, you know, ask you know, half a dozen to leave. A couple of a couple of a couple of others are left, but very like we have very little conflict. We've got to, and and also having the cultural part, you know. So when a person comes in, we say this is our culture, all right. And so yeah. we 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 talk to them about culture. We talk to them about values. You know, we talk to them. You know, we've got five core values, and those core values are non-negotiable. If you yeah. can't stick, if you can't actually say, and you can tell in an interview situation, you go through those five values. And, and if you see people cringing or whatever about one or two of them, you go, hang on a second. Yeah. What, what's that about? Yeah. So you deal with it before you start. So the core values is a big thing and also knowing who they are. And what are your core values? Maybe somebody listening in and they'd be like, hey, you know what? I, that's, that's interesting. I'd like to work for a business like that with these values. These are my values. Yeah. So five, five core values. Uh, the first one is courageous growth. All right. So it's not about having like um, just growth. It's courageous growth. It's it's taking like risks, calculated risks, lifelong learning. All right. Lifelong learning is 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 I think is a is a culture that we have. Um, developing relationships. All right. So we are a relational company, which builds into our into our uh, culture. So we use things like edification, and we build people up. Um, uh, success makes success all right so we are all about trying to help other people being successful and so by by actually raising other people up as successful we as a company are successful and we be, we look successful yeah um and and also dynamic leadership all right so leadership is not just a um a thing you do it's dynamic it's got a reason it's got a purpose it's it's about how do we aspire to be better on an ongoing basis so there are there are five and they're just not they're absolutely non negotiable yeah i i like that a lot and it's something i i was talking about with um one of actually my first clients um who's actually in brisbane and uh, um mm -hmm. i i hope i'm saying that right Anyway, um, yeah, right. yep. so this is a conversation that I have with him, you know, instead of creating like a UFC environment where everybody's just fighting each other and trying, that's exactly what his team was like when we started working together. Mm. Right? Everybody was competing against each other. They were trying to bust each other and, you know, the arguments would never end. Um, I shared, you know, kind of the essence of what you just shared with, with me right here. Um, 
this idea of creating like a basketball team instead of a UFC match where everybody's, you know, kicking mm. each other's asses. Um, you create a basketball team and you rally that team towards a, a certain goal, right? So if I support you, we're, I'm going to win, just like you said. And, you know, I don't see many companies understanding this principle, but um, I'm really happy that you're, you're implementing it and, you know, mm. we're talking about it and more people can get this as an example. Yeah. And I think that's, that comes out of the years of the not-for-profit world is because yeah. people not people are not there for the money they're mm -hmm. there they're there because of passion they're there because of inner purpose and so they in the not-for-profit world yeah there's still a little bit of you know personality clashes there always will be yeah. but ultimately they're there to do a particular they're there for a particular mission and it's clear yeah it's clear what the mission they're, they're there to help disabled people or they're there to help women or men or whatever it might be it's very clear there's no there's no gray lines of what they're there to do however in business it's generally only one person that actually really holds on to that, you know, when it starts. And unless you can actually get that and everybody knows what it's about, otherwise some people are just going there just for a job. And, you know, I think you've got to get, you've got to lift it. Everybody's got to be for a reason more than just a job to get the money. Yeah. And if that's what they're there for, you know, there's plenty of jobs out there they can get money from, all right? But you've got to be there to actually serve the, the mission. Yes, and I absolutely think that this there is this huge illusion, especially in you know, in entrepreneurs who haven't gone through all the experience that you have. Um, this idea that you know people, will, if you can pay people well, you're going to attract high performers. That's not true. High performers, okay, you, they need to be compensated properly, but they care about something bigger than themselves because nobody's going to show up as they're a hundred percent if they don't feel like they're part of something bigger. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I, I couldn't, I could not agree more. And, and also if you, once you start to understand love languages, like some people yeah. are driven by the money, you know, right. But it's only a small portion of our community. All right. The difference being is everybody is driven by purpose. Yes. Yeah. Some people's purpose they, they think money is their purpose, but they but the, that's just a vehicle to actually to outlive their purpose yes. or, their, or, or their decision or their dream or whatever it might be. And so, yeah, it's knowing, yeah, getting under, you know, old Shrek common, you know, pull back the layers and get down to the core of who people are. And, uh, and as I said, you, 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 you find people that have given them a, a real, you know, a real feeling that they're actually making a difference. Yeah. Wow. You know, yeah. Now you're going to change. And that they have a say in, in the business and they're actually being listened to, right? And they're being, mm. their input is being valued. That's, that's also huge. Um, and that's also a big distinction, right? You want to hire people who have the emotional maturity to understand that they're not chasing the money. They're chasing what they think the money will bring them, which is that sense of purpose. Mm. But not everybody gets that, yeah. right? They're still in that old programming. Hmm. Yeah, and I think what, what, one of the things I'm really like in our team, and, and, and I, le I learned this a little bit from a guy by the name of Darren Hardy. You may, may know Darren Hardy over there in the States. Um, he's, he's a brilliant thinker, and he, he has what he calls the A team, right? So his A team is his, is his group of people that gets things done. Yeah. And I thought that's a great, and that, that's a great analogy. You know, the A team, they're, 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 they're number one. They're, they're, and I went, hang on a second. Well, if that, they're the A team, what about? is the rest of them going to be the B team? And, yeah. and so now you go this segregation. And so yes. thought of it, and we just said, okay, we've got an A team and we've got an action team, both being in the A. Yeah. So that, that little dynamic where we used to call it senior leaders and, and everybody else, that's now everybody's got a name there. We're part of the action. We, we get this stuff done, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so, and they are the doers. And again, culture. You know, like everybody has in our business, everybody has a say. And we have Zoom meetings and it's like we've got I've got my big 54 inch screen and fill up full of people and everybody's and it's great. Every Monday it's just have, have a bit of fun. Yeah, and like the definition is so important, right? Definition is so powerful. And yeah, I, I like that, right? Because like you have the A team and then you feel you're in the B team. You feel some. You feel less than, even though you're not. You're essential. Mm -hmm. 
to the whole procedure. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. So let's get into, you mentioned Zoom. Let's get into the tech side of things, right? Yeah. Um, what should entrepreneurs know mm -hmm. about tech that they're not really paying attention to right now? Yeah. Mate, there is quite a bit. I, I mm -hmm. think in, in the tech world, there is... I think COVID, you know, I, I think this COVID thing, and, and I spoke on this just a little while ago in a, in a, a summit, the, the COVID has pushed fast forward on the tech world, all right? And where I think people are getting themselves into a lot of trouble, and I see this time and time again, is they try and adopt too much technology and they do everything poorly mm -hmm. than trying to make, you know, pick two or three that will do the job well. Right. And that is the key, the key issue that I'm seeing time and time again. Like there's 1,300 apps, 1,300 new apps being developed and put on Apple Play or, or um, uh, Android a day, every yeah. single day. Mine is also in there. Like you cannot keep this. <laughs> <laughs> and so is mine. Yeah. And there we so, go. <laughs> so, but but it's, there was just there was just so many in there, you yeah. know. Like, uh, yeah. You know, so you know, you talk about CRMs or you talk about cloud-based technology. It doesn't matter what you've got. You've got the, the the choice is huge. And so people jump and jump and jump and jump all over the place, rather than actually having a consultant. You know, like we talk about, you were talking about coaches before and actually being a part of a team. Like engage somebody who knows or has got a fair idea of what's going on in the marketplace and where things are going, you know? And so, so I think, I think number one, the, the amount of apps and bits and pieces people are using, you know, eight, on, on an average, you know, just the, the mobile phone, on yeah. average, people have got 80, 80 apps in their phone. I've got, I've got three that I use on a daily basis. What I've, got, I've got about 50 or 60. Three, that, that, that's my CRM. All right, but my CRM is also my telephone. It's also all my sales pipeline. It's also the way in which I have calls in and out, messaging. All all my communication is done through my CRM. There is no, I don't use anything else. I don't use Google or Microsoft or Messenger. Mm. It was all done through the one platform. So I use that one. It does all my booking and the whole bit. That's that's number one. Number two is the actual phone itself. All right, and the third one is is my music. I use those three on a pretty much a daily basis. What music do you love to listen to? <clears throat> Sorry, music. Ah, oh, gee whiz. Uh, I'm, I'm a pretty, I, I, I listen to anything. So um, I've just driven 22 hours uh, to arrive to where I'm at now. And I had, um, uh, what I have, I've had Aussie Crawl, Australian Choral, which is um, some really, you know, really cultural Australian music. I had a bit of Enya, which was mm. just something to, to, to pacify me out a little bit. And uh, meatloaf. Uh, meatloaf. So I'm a bit, a bit of a boy. <clears throat> meatloaf. I'm a bit of a boy of the '80s. So uh, meatloaf. Yeah, bat out of hell for meatloaf was a was a very strong one back in my day. So yeah, I'm not familiar very with meatloaf. I don't, I'm meatloaf. gonna check it out. If it's anything like ACDC, I I cannot get enough of ACDC. It's it's insane. Uh, mate, it's crazy. Uh, well, well, ACDC. My my uh, my young grandson, two years of age. And um, and when we're talking across the uh, across a Zoom or something like that, I'll sing it. I'll sing it. Thunderstruck, and he starts yeah. to jump up and down. Thunder. Mm. thunder. So I'm, I'm now Poppy Thunder. So yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, it gets you really pumped up. I love that yeah. band. Um, awesome. So you, your CRM in terms of tech <clears throat> is that designed to be used like by any entrepreneur or? specific niches are there specific niches that could benefit from the crm the most okay so i think if we just look at a crm as as a global thing there are so many on the market and they call themselves all in one i think what we've just finished developing off is the first true all in one um mm -hmm. it has the, and it's and it's far above everything else the the challenge you have with with crms is they'll do parts and then, and then you get an add-ons, and you're, you're paying, and you're paying, and you're paying, right. and you're paying, right. and and so 
to get to get the the, the features you need you know, people are using zapier and all these different things and it's clunky and and so what i'm seeing in that market and the re only reason i actually went down this line is because our virtual assistants you know we we were actually servicing about 15 different crms and so we were all the time having to update and get training done and, and i said look this is just crazy we're spending a fortune on updating all these different ones i said we could spend if we actually got that amount of money that we're doing on training to keep up to date we spent yeah. that amount of money we could actually probably develop our own so we did you did and yeah. And yeah, you know, it just and, and launched launched out, and everybody who's onto it so far has said, "Well, this is by far the, the easiest one they've ever used." Um, but it's whether you use our say it's called CRM Hub, but it, whether you use that or any other on the planet, it's about when you're looking at technology, look at what you need for the future. Mm -hmm. And I said that this is the biggest tip I can give anybody. A lot of people go in, they'll get a CRM, they'll get something like MailChimp. And MailChimp might be the perfect thing for them all right, as a business, small business owner, never going to need anything big because it's perfectly tailored for right. that small little business. That's all it's going to ever do. Right. But don't ever buy. The, the, the last thing you should be thinking about when buying technology is the cost. Mm. Now, it's... It's a last consideration. It's what do I need? What functions do I need now and potentially in the future? Because it costs you a massive amount. And CRM is the biggest one that I've, I've known is moving from one to the other. The cost yeah. of changing and downtime and frustration is much more than paying a, a little bit higher price or getting the free version. All right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say cost is there as a consideration and you've got to consider it, but try and consider it as a, can I make this platform grow with me and, or is it worthwhile paying a little bit more on a month to month basis at the start to get everything that I can build it and grow with it. And that's, that was the ethos that we went into this. So we, we kept the price down and the specs very, very high um, and made it. And it's, there's no tiered pricing as well. So. But that has to do like <clears throat> also with the uh, final element mindset. I mean, there's a lot of work from moving from a solopreneur mindset to a real business owner mindset, right? So if you start with, with that business owner mindset and the first step is thinking, okay, how can I build a company that I can sell, right? Doesn't mean you have to sell it, but starting with that idea is actually very powerful then you're going to be much more likely yes. to adapt this principle that you just shared of, Hey, don't think of, don't, don't buy the CRM that you need right now. Buy the one that you're going to need in the future when you have this huge team of employees and it's so many moving parts, right? So making that transition in terms of thinking of a business owner, that's a, a journey in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, before we move into that, um, what, who do you feel? would benefit the most from your CRM right now? Uh, look, it's, I would say it's a business, business owners, three to five user space and above. That's, mm -hmm. that's absolutely the niche and, 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 as, and as big as you want. All right? right. That's from a price point of view, from a need point of view, um, three to five users, all right, that need to have access. Now yeah. I don't. I don't just talk about three to five employees either. So if you've got you know somebody doing your Facebook marketing, your Google ads, et cetera, et cetera, rather than actually making them users, <coughs> which is what a lot of people do, like you can actually get this and actually have as many users you want doing, and you're outsourcing. You don't have to have the team yourself, right? All right. So all the different contractors you are using. So if you've got three or four people needing needing access to your CRM, that's Yes, yeah. the people that we're really targeting. And I took a look at your prices, not to, uh, you know, over promote it, but it's really mm -hmm. a steal. I mean, if you already have three or four people that are working in your business, you already have enough costs, right? You're paying a lot just to keep those employees. Um, and looking at your prices, you know, it's it's really, really good value versus price offer. Yeah, if you... If you if you if you start to think about yeah you know, because I said I say truly an all in one system there's eleven different components to the system mm -hmm. um, 
if you were to get those separately, which is what most of them do, like things like Calendly or Bookio, so like so you've got booking yeah. systems and you've got that's all built into this. You've got pipe yep. drive, it, it, all your pipelines and your funnel builders and everything you can think of that you really need to do your marketing and your customer relationships and your customer journey. It's all there. It's got Facebook advertising in it. It's got um, Google you know, ads manager in it. It's, it's built into the integrity part of the system. So it, it's literally a dashboard you can go to and you can monitor your whole business like that. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's move on to my favorite place in the world, my playground. Let's talk about mindset. Yeah, love to. What makes a great business owner mindset from your perspective? Me, I, I, I actually call it have a strong inner game. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about passion, all right? You've got to be passionate. Yes, you know, Jimmy Collins talks a lot of that in the book, Good to Great. Passion is, is good. It's something you need. Having a strong why, you know, Simon Sink talks about having that strong why, you know. But I, I, I package it up into, you know, what drives you to get your inner game? What is really... If you dig it, dig it down, what gets you out of bed every single day, even when it gets damn tough, all right? And, and if you're playing the right game, um, you'll, you'll keep on fighting because you just believe in what you're doing. Mm. That's what makes the entrepreneur push through. When, mm. when everybody's saying give up, they go, no, I believe in this. I know it will make it. And, and then quite often, they're before their time or you know, yeah, people haven't thought that they're so, they're so far ahead of the game. Everybody's doubting. And, and uh, Winston Churchill used to say uh, something, something about, you know, when everybody doubt you, it's a time to keep going. Cause you know, it's, it's, that's, that's this entrepreneurial spirit is to, is to go where nobody has gone before. Mm -hmm. as Captain Kirk would say from Star Trek. So it's, it's just go, just moving forward. And um, yeah. Yeah, and it definitely can feel lonely. I mean, you know, as mm. as a high performer, you have such high standards for yourself and you kind of have the sense of, you know, not everybody can do what you can do. And in many cases, you're right. And you just feel kind of isolated and you kind of feel like all you have is yourself, right? Um, but it's very easy to get out of bed and be motivated when your life is shit, right? But when th things are going well, right? How do you find that motivation? How do you say, hey, mm. you know what? I'm successful, but I feel like there's something more in me that I have to give. Mm. I, for me, I get it out of, of the people that are in my team, all right? Mm. The people who are working with me. Right. And my, my sense of value is... Like I take it very serious. I talk. I said about you know back in two thousand eighteen, I was I was off the retirement bill. Um, lasted a whole two weeks. The reason that I kept on going and I I turned this thing around is because I was committed to the people that were working for me, and you know there was you know without going into too much detail, basically they were supposed to go with a business that I sold, and last minute they didn't, and so instantly I had these fifteen people that were going to be out of a job that I'd grown to, you know, be very, very close to. Yeah. So yeah. that, that has never stopped in me. And so, yes, I'm about helping business owners. Absolutely. I really want to, cause I, I know myself now I, I call, I call myself the time and freedom creator. You know, I like to create time and freedom for people and entrepreneurs because that was something I didn't have. I didn't, I wasn't at home with my kids. So I wasn't at home when I should have been at home. I was out there working and, and just about, killed literally just about killed myself doing it yeah but that that's the reason i do business but the reason i do the business the way i do it now is not just to help the business owners but it's also about the people i employ to making sure that i'm, I'm providing them with a good living you know honorable great place to work you know that is a huge thing for me so when things going bad i go i can't let them down mm. and in return over time, it's got the same way. They're, like they're saying, you know, when, when you feel alone, when you feel like you're in the middle of the night, you, 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 your brain's going 50 miles an hour, you're starting to send off text messages, and then you get a text message back saying, hey, kill, go to bed. Um, it's, you go, oh, hang on a second, they, they, they care. And so, and giving them permission, giving them permission to 
keep you accountable. All right. So it, that's, that's been a big part. And that's, that's, okay, that's, that's, that's my passion. That's not just, it's the business owners. Yes. That's what creates the income, but it's where the money goes. That is, that's the gold for me. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And, um, <clears throat> you know, something that I, I've been touching upon for a while now, um, is this idea that having this external thing that you're chasing is actually a huge trap in terms of, you know, you mentioned inner game. Uh, when I get to the point, I'm going to feel really good about myself, but you never do. It doesn't matter how successful you are. You still never find that thing, that external thing that gives you the validation that you're looking for, or, you know, that feeling of fulfillment that you want. Um, so what I'd love to talk about is this idea that you need to find that thing that you think you're searching for externally. You, you need to find that within. And that's going to give you the freedom and creativity and um, unlock that potential inside of you to grow faster than you ever thought it would because you stopped caring so much about the thing happening, right? How do you feel about this? Is this something that you play around with right now? Or is this something that you found out about like years ago? Yeah, it's it's something I found out years ago, and it's something I play around with today. It's yeah. I think it's a constant it's, it's a constant shuffle. Um, I, and I was reading some of your stuff. You talk about balance, yeah, that that area of balance where sometimes you are out of control, but your your you, your inner strength pulls you back in and it brings you in alignment and brings you on your true north. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really strongly believe that you can really get out you can get out of kilter very fast. All right. You know, if you're if you're tracing things you now, oh, I want the next car, I want the next house, I want the next boat, whatever it might right. be. If you're chasing those things for validity, you're chasing the wrong things. It's it's a it's it's there's got to be something more than just the thing. And it, yeah. and, and if and if it's it's yeah for me it's based upon how many people I can employ. You know, and I'm I'm about trying to employ more, and and the, and the rest of it comes. You know, I'm not focused. Yeah, I've just bought a brand new bat. Love it. You know, don't be. I like my. I'm a, I'm a big boys toy person, but I don't work for those things. They are a byproduct. All right, and things that I have on my bucket list or my tick list to get along the way as I can afford them. But it's about my real goal is about yeah now particularly as I said I I, I missed out on a, on a younger younger sort of life working stupid o'clock hours. Now you know I've. I've moved up to the Northern Territory because my wife has wanted to chase her passion. Um, mm. And so I'm going, it's your time, darling, you know? What so. passion is she chasing? Uh, she's, she's a uh, midwife. All right. Mm. And so, yeah, so she, she's, she's gone up here to, um, to do that. So it's been really, really cool. Yeah, it's probably a very gratifying job to uh, have, right? Yeah, she, she, she loves her job, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Loves it. For job. sure. <laughs> For sure, and sounds yeah, sounds like a lot of fun too. Yeah, um, what is what is one impossible goal that you have right now that feels really really exciting for you, but it's like I don't know, you know, I've done a lot of impossible shit in my life, but this one, right? Yeah. Um... Well, let me t say it's very fresh. It's very new. Mm. So I've um, I've come to this this new North, Northern Territory of Australia is is very much you're going to the the southern and eastern states you now Queensland, uh, New South Wales, uh, Victoria, even Western Australia. Very strong centric, very business orientated, high tech. Um, I've been up here, you know, done a little bit of research around. I'm going, wow, the, the need here is phenomenal. So I've, I've actually set myself one enormous goal only just recently to be the number one consultant in the Northern Territory. Um, mm. and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm now starting to unpack what does that mean? So how many, how many you know, businesses do I really want to help and, and really take it, you know, take, take, it you know, take it a whole new level? A whole it's a whole basically state territory um right and it's huge and it also has a very large indigenous population so a lot of people with a lot of different ideas 
Uh, they're our they're our homeland people. It just, you know? it just got goosebumps. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like that is again my wife passionate about indigenous, you know, midwifery and stuff like that, and I, and I'm passionate about the welfare side of things. But this area is is it's 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 run by a a, a billion dollar mining company, and that's going to be shutting down soon. Ooh. And so I'm going. Yeah, it's got eight years to run. Right, and so within eight years, this community is going to pretty much its main source of income is going to disappear in eight years. Yeah, what is it going to do? They need to unlock yeah. creativity. They need guidance. They need to understand that they are more than what they believe that they mm-hmm. are. Yeah, Absolutely. otherwise, what yeah. options do they have? Right. That's exactly right. And so you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting pretty. Up, up just thinking about it here now i'm starting to go oh yeah it's just some of the ideas and bits of pieces some, some things i took for granted when living in new south wales yeah it was just like everybody talked about it up here people go what are you talking about you know like, like can you give me an example i'll give you a great I'll give you a really good example i um i was talking to um it's one of the business development people up here and he was doing some seminars and um, he was looking for somebody to do a seminar on Facebook, on how to do Facebook for business. Right. When, when he was talking about Facebook, he was actually talking about how to help people to set up their own profile in Facebook. <laughs> not, not a business page. Wow. He just needed That's somebody to show crazy. people how to set up a new, <laughs> a, a new well, profile and, and, and make it and start to gather friends. Well, that's absolutely the need right now, right? In two or three years, they're gonna everybody's gonna talk about Facebook ads because they're gonna accelerate their progress exponentially, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so, and, and the other one was is like we started to talk about. I, I looked at um, at the yeah, the Google My Business sort of stuff, and and like there was like I was searching hard for some different businesses up here, yeah. and I couldn't find them. And when I found the businesses that I was looking for. You know, their websites were non-responsive. Like, 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 like I, I, I couldn't navigate on a mobile phone. Yeah, I'm going, wow. Like, and I mean, I don't mean one or two. I mean every website throughout the territory. And it's almost, it, it's, it, it seems to be like, uh, awesome. I got off the plane, and the technology-wise, they're back ten years ago. Yeah, and I was, yeah. I was surprised by that. Well, they I knew that they need needed you. some stuff. But I was surprised at how, yeah. I, and, and I'm, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I've already talked to a couple of other consultants that I work with, and we're going, okay, let's 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 make this happen. So I'm pretty pretty pumped about it at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like if you feel in your heart that there's a pull in that sense, they're absolutely calling for you, and they absolutely need you. And yeah, mm. no, I think you yeah. you you would make a big big difference in in the community. Um, yeah. Have you started putting pen to paper in terms of what that would mean to you? Like in terms of resources, people, time? Like... Start, start, started to play that out. So I've, I've only re- like I'm really need to, I need to know the people first, you know, but like yeah. my, my thing, I've got a bit, I've got a bit of a hit list, so to speak of the people I want to in, want to meet. All right. And so I'm a network with and start to build some networks. I'm a part of a, um, a networking group that's it's been it's only been around in Australia for a couple of years now and it's growing quite fast and it's and it's coming across. So, what, where about you located yourself? What 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 city? I'm in Romania, Europe. In Romania, in Europe. In Europe. So, where Europe is actually going to be? I think it's in 2025 for this particular uh, networking group. So, it's called BX Networking. So, it's in Australia, nice. New Zealand. Going, it's going over to uh, United States. It starts in the United States next year. And it's heading over into the Europe um, and everything in 2023, 24. Right. Um, but it'll probably around the British Isles sort of area first before it goes through over in your area. So but it's a bit like BNI. It's, it's, a, it's basically BNI. It's BNI. Right. It, it's reinvented in some respects. It, it's it's got a real real style to it, and it's got a real. It's actually got a lot of Australian flavour. In other words, um, a little bit laid back rather than the, 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 the legality part that comes out of the United States. I, I tried joining BNI in Bucharest because I lived in the capital like for six years where I was teaching the, uh, the martial arts program, the personal development. 
Uh, now I move closer to the mountains. Life is so much better. Uh, yeah. But I try to join BNI in Bucharest. And after interviewing me, they're like, yeah, you know, you're great, but we don't need a coach. I felt so rejected. <laughs> you assholes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, look, yeah, I, I've, I've had a lot of different experiences with them. And and, um, and I was a part of BNI for a while, but it's... I, as I said, I'm, I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to put them down too much, but BX, you know where it's going, and uh, and I know I was actually on my podcast um, this morning. I actually interviewed the CEO of, uh, of BX, a guy by the name Matt Alderton, and Matt is an amazing, inspiring, down to earth. You know how can I help sort of person rather than this is my system, you must follow it. All right, it's it's sort of like here is a here is a network for you to use. All right, with with a small, small amount, it's, I, I call it policy governance. You know, it's don't do anything against the law, and pretty much anything's okay. You right. know, that, that's that's the philosophy about it. It's about just building entrepreneurs rather than about building a brand um, mm -hmm. of networkers. Mm -hmm. It's a different philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and BNI is about building BNI. BX is about building business owners. It's a different, very different. So yeah, and yeah, we got a bit yeah, of totally tangent different. there, but it's. Totally different approach for sure. But that, yeah. but that within, yeah. You know, when you say about going where I want to go, bringing bringing that to the Northern Territory, it's not in the Northern Territory yet. Um, yeah, there's there's zero members in the Northern Territory, and so my goal is to, is to open up a couple of a couple of meeting rooms. You know what this reminds me of? Um, Grant Cardone this, did this one thing, uh, undercover billionaire. I'm not a huge fan of of Grant Cardone, but I really, really appreciated for him for mm. doing that. He just went into this city where nobody knew him and he had, had to create a million dollar business in 90 days or something like that. That it does, yeah. yeah. I th do you know what I'm what I'm referring to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he and, and actually built a $5 million business in 90 days. Just in, insane. Yeah. 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 It yeah. kind of reminds it's, me of that. That's, well, but that's, it's, it's, yeah. Again, I, I, I think differently. Yeah. My, my mindset is not necessarily on how many million dollars, it's how many people I can employ, you know, yep. which turns into dollars. You know? yep. and, and so yep. I've, I just know if I can, if I can get you know, 30 or 40 VAs all right, um, per year, that, that adds another million dollars. You know? it's, yep. But it, it, it changes 30 people's lives all right, in, in, their, in their country and it changes 30 business owners' lives. So yeah. I'm getting double whammy like out of it. That's cool. I like that for sure. Um, what kind of support do you think you would need to make this uh, goal happen? The network is going to be huge. All right. right. So, but the, the BX network and stuff like that. I I know that by myself, it's it's it, I'd be pushing it uphill to even remotely think that I could do it by myself. Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm I'm a I'm, I'm, like I've been a football player. I've been basketball. Everything I've always done has always been a team sport. Yeah. And so how do, how do you build a team? You know, so having mindset coaches are, are, are going to be in, in yeah, a big, big part of it. Having business coaches, having people to be able to do all the stuff that, you know, and as you said, in business, you, you get to learn a lot of stuff and you get to be okay at a lot of stuff. But I, I, I want, um, I, I believe, you know, if you're going to do something, get the people who are the best at doing it. You know, and get the people that are better than you get better than you at doing it to, to do those things. So Yeah. Yeah. And somebody said if you have a vision that you can achieve by yourself, you're obviously not thinking big enough. Big enough. Exactly right. right. And, and 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 that's that's what this is. And you know, talking to Matt about it, you know, we we really want to just say, okay, Northern Territory, we we're here to help. I think the, the biggest challenge whatever would be that takes. Like finding right. something for like educating people who are older. I think that's going to be the biggest roadblock. Like who are you going to be focusing your attention on initially? Yeah, so so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be focusing on, on personally in, in the tourism market. It, like, that's where it's already strong. Like Darwin, Darwin and the Northern Territory is a very strong mm -hmm. tourism market mm -hmm. that's got, mm -hmm. that's got mm -hmm. a very small, very small amount of work could actually grow it. And the, the, most of the tourism bodies are around fishing and reef right. and water. So it's a younger generation as well. So you're going to be exactly in your element, right? I know Absolutely. you're passionate about fishing. There we go. There's another one. Uh, uh, I am passionate <laughs> about it. I, I, yeah, as, uh, I didn't get my boat just to sit it, sit it in the garage, that's for sure. 
but but it's but but it is it like it's a it there is a there is the older guard now i went into the into the tackle shop over in darwin you know a couple of days ago now the older guy old george who his name was george was there he's oh he's telling but everybody else in the shop was like 30 years and younger yeah who are the young the young barramundi you know champions and all that type of stuff so there's a young group of people ready to take the next entrepreneurial journey and you could see it and you're walking through the town there wasn't a lot of people my age there wasn't a lot of, a lot of people with the gray hair you know they were, they were typically you know you're, you're 30 to 40 year olds you know I was, I was looking as i was walking the town and it's, it was an interesting it was an interesting observation i was saying mm, there there is there is opportunity a mile here yeah yeah and you only need like the high performers in the community to really create a big mm. impact right and they're yeah. going to gravitate yeah. to you for sure yeah just 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 you get that upswell happening yeah well they say the rising tide lifts all ships you know get a couple yeah. of people to start building some stuff and it'll, it'll just yeah it'll just take off beautiful Kelvin, uh this was really fun and i'm really really happy that we got a chance to talk about uh, more in terms of your passion project i really feel it mm. um mm. and uh and I think it's very, it's a beautiful coincidence that your name is Holiday and you help people have more freedom. Exactly right. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm the happy holiday, mate. So happy holiday, <laughs> mate. Give everybody time and freedom, make them happy. It makes me happy. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, what's the best place for people to get in touch with you? Look, the easiest way is um, transformhub.com.au is the company website, but my name's Kelvin Holiday, so kelvinholiday.com. Can't, can't be much easier than that. Just put my name.com at the end and away you'll go. You'll see me, click on there. Look, I, I love to talk. Um, you probably already noticed that. So I'm, I'm happy. You know, I give my time away a lot, you know, just to try and help people steer in the right room. So yeah, anybody wants to, wants to jump on, happy to, it doesn't matter what side of the country I'm here to help. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, investing your time in education and uh, sharing your wisdom um and hopefully i'll see you soon maybe the next interview will be on your boat who knows mate and i might have to actually get and jump over on the hot seat one day and, and maybe have a chat over there as well okay. yeah why not beautiful this was fun right thank you so much for tuning in and absolutely give us a review, a rating, wherever you listen to your podcast, whatever service you use to get your podcasts, tell us what you think, give us a rating, it's going to help us tremendously. And if you are an entrepreneur looking to boost sales, improve your marketing, but also build a business of true freedom and true success without overwhelm, without overwork, absolutely check out my app, my mobile app. It's called The Power Become Happy and Wealthy app and you can find it on the app store and on google play thank you so much and i will see you soon